It's been over three quarters of a century since 1948, and the smoldering conflict between Israel and Palestine is still ablaze. Now, what really grabs your attention is that throughout this enduring struggle, Palestine hasn't had an official army like Israel. This is because Palestine hasn't been recognized as a state yet. You might find yourself pondering, how has Palestine managed to stand firm and battle for its cause for over 50 years? The straightforward answer is that a lot of folks want to see Palestine become independent. But those who yearn for this are split into two main factions. The first is the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, and the second consists of groups outside the PLO. Let's break down both sides. Starting with the PLO, renowned for its legendary leader, Yasser Arafat. The PLO is like a mosaic of various Palestinian resistance organizations. Politically speaking, the PLO zeroes in on political lobbying for Palestinian independence. But don't let that fool you. PLO groups also have armed divisions. One of the largest factions within the PLO is Fatah, a political party birthed in 1959. When it comes to armed forces, Fatah has a special unit called Al-Aqsa Martyr Brigades, famed for their prowess in guerrilla warfare using long-barreled firearms. Then there's the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. whose armed force, the Brigade Abu Ali Mustafa, specializes in bombings and hijackings. And don't forget the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, whose military wing, the National Resistance Brigade, shines in espionage and reconnaissance. When you talk about the PLO and its armed wings, their strength doesn't exactly shine in modern warfare involving rockets, missiles, and the like, as the organization mainly concentrates on the diplomatic arena. However, they've also orchestrated popular Palestinian resistance against Israel, known as Intifada. One of the PLO's triumphs was the Oslo Accords, a compromise in the Israel-Palestine conflict, where Israel was acknowledged by Palestine, and Palestine was given the green light to form its government. But the Oslo Accords didn't sit well with some groups, even sparking opposition. To this moment, a moment when we dare to pledge what for so long... These militant groups, not part of the PLO, rejected the compromise with Israel and pursued radical resistance. These non-PLO groups often throw a wrench in the negotiations between Israel and Palestine, as witnessed during the announcement of the Oslo Accords. So, when it comes to firepower, Non-PLO groups pack a bigger punch than the PLO. One of the most notorious jihad forces out there is Hamas. Historically, Hamas isn't just a jihad force. But a significant Palestinian political faction ruling the Gaza Strip. Within this political faction, a military wing named the Brigade Is Adin al qassam was formed, often seen standing up to Israel. The exact headcount in Hamas is a bit murky, but Israeli intelligence estimates it to be somewhere between 30,000 to 50,000 trained personnel. When it comes to weaponry, Hamas is no pushover. They've shown themselves to be well-armed, wielding various infantry weapons, including grenades, machine guns, improvised rockets, bombs, martyrdom, and homemade explosives. They also brandish advanced weapons, mainly modern missiles, including anti-tank Cornet EE, Conker's M, Bolsi 2, 9K11 Malyutka, and Milan rockets. For defense, they've got anti-aircraft rockets like SA-7B, SA-18 Igla, and SA-29 Iglas. In recent years, Hamas has also flaunted unmanned drones, claimed to be self-made, called Ababil-1. With all this firepower, it's no wonder Hamas is a feared war group in the Gaza Strip. Now, the million dollar question is, if Hamas is just a political faction in a country with a chaotic economy, how can they be so flush with cash? So flush, in fact, that Hamas once unleashed up to 1,800 rockets in a single day at Israel, 
to beat the Iron Dome. The wellspring of Hamas's funding remains shrouded in mystery, but the name Emir Qatar, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, often echoes. This is because the Emir once paid a visit to Hamas headquarters and forked over up to US dollar 1.8 billion. However, this donation seems like small potatoes compared to Hamas's actions, so the real benefactor remains under wraps. Besides Hamas, another pro-Palestine group worth a mention is PIJ, or Palestine Islamic Jihad, also rooted in the Gaza Strip. This group sprang to life in 1981 as a backlash to the rejection of the Oslo policy seen as phony diplomacy for Palestinian independence from Israel. Back then, Palestinian students studying in Egypt banded together to form PIJ. Like Hamas, PIJ aims to demolish the Israeli military. But specifically, PIJ also wants to erect an Islamic Palestinian state. Therefore, the current statehood proposed by Palestinian political figures is flat out rejected by PIJ, who vowed never to partake in elections. Despite boasting a relatively modest force of about 8,000 folks, PIJ has made Israel and the United States jittery. Intriguingly, this stance from America and Israel is due to the slickly organized attacks executed by PIJ. It's worth noting that PIJ doesn't have missiles or rockets like Hamas, but precise war strategies often trump sheer firepower. Israel's frequent unease towards PIJ is also fueled by the suspicion that PIJ is in cahoots with Iran. This theory holds water, as Ziad al nakala the leader of PIJ, rubbed elbows with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Therefore, this force is also rumored to receive training and weapons from Iran. So PIJ's attack capability isn't just hot air. Even worse, in August 2022, PIJ paraded with a replica rocket they claim to possess further rattling Israel. Officially, Palestine doesn't have a Palestinian military force to speak of. The NSF, which lays down the law there, is also a product of the Oslo Agreement tied to Israel. The clashes we've witnessed are the result of skirmishes by pro-Palestine groups like Hamas, PIJ, and others, each with their stakes in Palestine. Therefore, the Gaza Strip they oversee remains on edge even though Israel and Palestine have called a ceasefire. So my humble prayer is for peace to reign there soon, so there are no more casualties.